I was born with long, shiny black hair, blue eyes, and pink, rosy cheeks. Just like my mom, or that's what everyone told me. I never met mom. All I had were pictures of her that my aunt and dad showed me. And she was beautiful. You should enter her into beauty pageants. She'll win every prize, just like her mom. Mm, maybe. I want her to be a weightlifter, just like me. Dad was a weightlifting champion, until he was informed that he had weak kidneys and was forced to retire. That was when he opened a cozy little fast food restaurant to make ends meet, but it wasn't doing very well. Hi everyone, my name is Arden, and I am THE She-Hulk of Germany. Please do like and subscribe before I continue. Both dad and aunt began deciding my future even before I could say my first words. And so I found a way to make them both happy, and myself too. I began participating in pageants and wore the prettiest gowns, spoke well and smiled gracefully. But the best part was, I got to show everyone my unique talent. I can lift this heavy stack of books easily. Everyone was amazed with how effortlessly I, a six-year-old, could carry weights. As I grew up, I got stronger. I even began to lift actual heavy weights on stage by the age of 13. It became my dream to keep training so that one day I could make it to the Olympics. My beauty pageant wins made me very popular in school. Almost everyone loved me, except for a few who picked on me and would call me Hercules just because I gained some muscles. Honestly, I didn't mind, and it was like a compliment for me. But one time, I saw them pick on a new student, Troy. He was always quiet and was smaller than all the other guys. Hey, go pick on someone your own size. Oh, does tiny Troy need a bodyguard now? <laughs> what are you gonna do? Well, first, if you want to talk to me, you should meet my eye line. I was pretty proud of myself. Soon I even began receiving letters and small little gifts congratulating me when I won competitions. It looked like I had a secret admirer. One evening when I got home, my dad and aunt looked so worried. I asked dad what was wrong. He just brushed me off saying it was nothing. It's not nothing. We're running out of money and your dad's treatments are getting more expensive. And whose fault is that? You're the one who doesn't save and spends every penny. You even spent all of Arden's competition money. It was for her other competitions. Please, both of you, calm down. We have to work together and think of ways to bring in extra money. They both relaxed a little and tried to think, but couldn't come up with anything. This was way worse than I thought. I couldn't let the restaurant close, and I couldn't let Dad miss his treatments because of it. I searched all over the internet for weightlifting competitions I could join, but all the ones I could find that paid were for grown men, not girls. So I decided to make my own. I passed out flyers all over town and made videos of me lifting dogs, tables, dressers, hoping that would make people curious enough to come. I told dad, we can use the restaurant as the venue. It'll bring customers and we'll have a place to host the show. <sighs> what exactly is the show? You're lifting dogs? I'll lift anything anyone can bring. But there's one problem. We need to offer prize money for people to compete with me. That'll be all the money we have. If we lose it, we won't. When I beat them, they'll have to pay me instead. Dad was very concerned, but he trusted me. If anyone can do this, it's you. I won't let you down. But the truth was, I was terrified. What if I lost even the little bit of money we had left? We had no other choice. And when the day came, many people showed up because they had loved my videos. Dad was making money without even trying, and of course, I was able to lift everything they brought, from more dogs to big weights, and even some of the people themselves. Not only did we make a bunch of money and save the restaurant, we got so much attention that I was given a scholarship at the best training academy in the country. And the best part? Being at this training academy meant I would even get a chance to compete at the Olympics someday. Then, I got another letter from my secret admirer saying congratulations for the big win. I had no idea who it could be. One weekend while I was visiting home, Dad had asked me to move a table to the outside seating area. They made me do every chore that required lifting or moving heavy things. Just as I began moving it, a very good-looking guy ran up to me, and my heart did a little backflip when I saw him. That's new. Wait, let me help you out. This is very heavy. Oh, no, it's completely fine. Oh, not at all. You might end up hurting your back. Oh, but he did. I watched in amusement as he frowned and struggled to move the table around. I had to hold back my laughter, but I couldn't help staring at him. He was so dreamy, kind, and sweet. Really, it's fine. I can do it. Arden, I know how strong you are, but I don't mind helping. 
how do you know me? Oh, sorry, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Jude. I was at the same school as you, and my little brother was in your class. I've seen you at competitions. You're really amazing. Oh my god, he was so kind. Wait, what if he was my secret admirer from back then? Turns out, he was now a final year medical student and visited our restaurant often with his friends. Pretty soon, I began visiting home often just to run into him. We would talk the entire time he was there, and he always praised me for my achievements in weightlifting and pageants. Now I was sure that Jude was my secret admirer. It was tradition for students to throw a coin into the fountain at the Academy Campus Fountain for good luck. Of course, I didn't believe it, but there was no harm in trying, right? Okay, let's try this out. I wish to go to the Olympics. <laughs> Making a wish to meet someone as good-looking as me? Uh, who do you think you are? Arden, it's me, Troy, from school. Troy? Oh, no way! How'd you get so tall? I'm sorry, I mean, you were... <laughs> yeah, I was a very tiny guy. <laughs> Turns out, Troy was a swimmer. He had a good glow-up, huh? But he was now very vain. He constantly looked at himself when he crossed a glass door or mirror and always praised his own good looks. He was constantly talking about how girls always get him gifts and food he likes. And he wouldn't stop talking about the amazing red car he was saving up to buy. It was so annoying. I pushed him in a bush to shut him up. Oh, I see. You're jealous that I'm talking about all these girls. Actually, I have a crush on someone else, so there. I could tell he was hurt, but he was too cocky. It would never work between us anyway. If you think what I did was mean, I should tell you what he did. Once he promised to give me swimming lessons. He said he would help me when I jumped in, but when I did, he didn't catch me. I started flailing my arms around and thought I was gonna drown when he lifted me up in his arms. Are you all right? All I could think about was how close our faces were to each other. I mean, I almost drowned, but I'm fine now. Okay then, uh, my arms hurt. Saying that, he let go of me and I was back to struggling to stay up in the pool. What a jerk. Just touch your feet to the ground. It's not that deep. Well, Troy wasn't lying. When I stood up, the water came as high as my stomach, but I wasn't gonna let him get away with dropping me back in the pool. I chased Troy around the building for a good five minutes before he hid behind some random stranger. All I could see was red, but the minute I looked up, my jaw dropped. It was Jude. Jude, hi. Wait, you know Jude? The real question should be, how do you know him? Huh, <laughs> looks like you met my little brother. What, he's your brother? Wait, is this the guy you- Bye Jude, I'll see you around. Troy had figured out Jude was the crush and he was not gonna let it go. I begged Troy not to say anything to Jude and even bought him food, held his towel at the end of the line at his swim practice, and even held a mirror for him just to admire himself. He finally agreed and even helped me by giving me ideas on how to get closer to Jude. He likes watching football, oh, and MSA videos too, so get to work if you want to have something in common with him. Ugh, man, he's so boring. I mean, look at me. I'm so smart and good looking and I'm an athlete. Wow, no wonder you don't have a girlfriend. You love yourself enough for two people. And Jude is just, he's perfect and handsome. <laughs> Ugh, gross. Stop talking about my brother. If it'll make you happy, I'll set you guys up on a date. But you have to focus on your upcoming competition first. I agreed and I was ready for my date with Jude. Except Jude didn't know it was a date. Troy bought two tickets to a movie and gave one to Jude and the other to me. I pretended that it was a coincidence. Jude even dropped me home and opened the car door for me as well. <sighs> Such a gentleman. He said he would be busy for a while with his medical school midterms, but we should hang out again soon. I told him I would love to and it was okay because I had to focus completely on the competition to get into the national team. I was so excited for the competition and even invited Troy, but Jude also came. I thought you were busy studying. I have a couple of hours to watch your big competition. Good luck. On the day of the competition, however, I was a nervous wreck. Dad, Aunt, Jude, and Troy showed up to support me along with my other classmates. It was a little embarrassing because of the sign they held up with my weightlifting face on it. All red and veiny, it looked like I'd explode. When it was my turn, I lifted the weight and heard cheers until I heard a scream and saw my dad faint in front of me. I left the competition and rushed him to the hospital. The doctor informed us that dad needed to have his kidney transplant surgery immediately. Aunt and I rushed to get the money to pay for the surgery, but what the doctor said 
left my jaw on the floor. Oh, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, someone already took care of it. Your dad is already in surgery. He then informed us that this person wanted to stay anonymous, but I was sure it was Jude because he asked me to forget about this person now and just stay with dad. But I couldn't just let him pay such a big amount. But I decided to first help dad recover before I thanked Jude who was busy studying anyway. A month later, dad himself kicked me out of the house and said I had to go back to the academy. And I'm glad he did because I got the best news ever. I was gonna get another chance to get into the national team. The new competition was in three months, so I trained and trained and trained some more and won. I was over the moon and I texted Troy and dad and told them the news. But there was one other person I wanted to give this news to, Jude. I rushed to meet him to thank him and also give him the news. I was shaking like a leaf as I walked towards Jude. But the minute I saw him, my heart shattered into a million pieces. He was talking to one of the prettiest girls I have ever seen, and they were smiling wide and holding hands. Arden, hey, why'd you want to meet so urgently? Everything okay? I wasn't paying attention to anything Jude said after he introduced me to the girl, his girlfriend. He said they'd been best friends since high school and finally, only a few days ago, confessed to each other that they were in love. That's when I realized our date really wasn't a date. He was just a nice guy. I spoke to her for a bit before I thanked Jude for paying for dad's surgery. I couldn't tell him about my crush now. Uh, Arden, it wasn't me. When Jude told me who it was, I immediately rushed back to the restaurant when I saw him standing there laughing and talking to my dad. What's going on with you? Are you alright? You… you paid for the surgery? Why? How'd you even get the money? I can't believe he told you when I asked him not to. I was collecting money to buy the car I wanted. It's not a big deal, Arden. It helped with the sur- It is a big deal! Why did you- It's because I like you, okay? I've liked you since you helped me back in school. You were my secret admirer? Yes, and always came to your competitions to support you. But I was too scared to talk to you in person. And then I saw how you spoke about Jude. You were falling in love with him. You were happy. I didn't want to come in between you two. I wasn't in love with Jude. I was just attracted to him because I thought he was… you. The one who wrote those letters. It helped boost my confidence so much. And I like you too, Troy. Just not as much as you love yourself. Troy and I began talking more about all of this and weeks later, Troy asked me out on a date. Even though he loved himself enough for the both of us, I gave him a chance. And a month later, we began dating. He was there the entire time during my practice. And finally, after years and years of training, hard work, and competitions, I made it to a prestigious international championship and won gold. Everyone supported and cheered for me, including my biggest supporters, my dad, aunt, and of course, Troy. I even opened my own training center and now train young girls in weightlifting and still continue to compete.